Hello, welcome to the last blessed conversation. I'm quite sad that it's finishing, but I'm so excited to be here one more time as we talk about how we go and make disciples. And today we are talking about how do I open the scriptures with someone who's still exploring faith? And I have the wonderful Joy and Victor on the sofa with me today. I am Nicola, um, if you don't know already. Um, But Joy, let's start with you. You've been in the church in Kings since it since it began and opening the bible reading it with people was something that you did um as you started the church can you just share a little bit of your experience and any highlights from doing that with those who didn't know jesus at that point yes the church started off by having a bible study Mm. and um there was probably about six or eight couples and um they they had a good time. We had a good time together exploring the Bible. And there was um, a lady called Di who's still with us today. And she was very, very good at inviting people that weren't Christians um, into their home. And she invited them to a Bible study at our house. And... Um, it was really good. She used to say to them, we're going to have a meal together and then we're going to study the Bible. So would you like to come along? And uh, they did. And they studied the Bible and they they came to faith. And um, it, it was a blessing. And, and when we moved out to Hazelmere, a uh, couple of years later, I think they nearly all moved out to join us again, which was really encouraging. But we used to have socials as well, where we used to invite people along, that we'd just have fun, mm. have normal, a normal day out together mm. and uh, ask them to join us. And, and then it was an inroad to be able to share Jesus with yeah. them. Yeah, that's so good. Oh, and now... Look at the church now. It's just, it's incredible. God is here. He's at work. Yeah. And Victor, this is part of your heart for small group, your small group now, you and your wife lead a small group. Can you just share about what your heart for your small group is and how bringing non-Christians into that environment is so key? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm from Brazil. I moved to the UK a couple of years ago mm-hmm. and I was, uh, I came to Christ through a small group. Mm-hmm. I actually went to a Christian camp that a friend from college invited me and I got very curious about what happened there some you know fascinating things inside of me and outside of me and then I I three months later I joined a, a, a professional judo club mm-hmm. and there were this this handful of, of warm Christians you know catching up with me and and, and inviting me to to small groups uh from from a different church mm-hmm. and then i i spent one year exploring the bible yeah because i was very resistant <laughs> and then in a in a second christian camp i came to christ mm-hmm. had a, a true experience with with god and 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 changed everything and delved into this passion you know to to reach out to other people mm-hmm. because i was blind everything was apparently fine with me until I saw it was not, and and yeah, so so moving to to the UK and to to High Wycombe specifically, I found King's Church and 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 we were as a family super excited with everything that is happening here, and there's this history that already happened. You know that the church was created the same way there, yeah, and we we lived down there, and after. You know, some time getting to know people and connecting people. We are finally with our with our small groups, and we are trying to mimic something that that Joy Joy talked. <laughs> the same format, really. Yeah. So we we have this Bible study group every every two weeks, and we alternate with socials or whatever or the activities that God uh, will, will show us mm-hmm. in a way that's very organic and 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 natural. Because we we know that sometimes it's, it's a big step for people here to to go directly to to a small group. Even if I've shared something with them, 
if I'm trying and helping them exploring their faith, to go to, to some, someone else's house or even to my house with weird people <laughs> uh, is a big group, is a big step. Mm -hmm. So if I invite them to a different kind of meeting, more informal one, they'll see that we are not so weird, you know, yeah. that we are actually fun and cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be interested in, in, in joining the small groups because mm -hmm. they will be friends of, of other people, not only my friends yeah. and vice versa. Oh, so good. That's good. And it's great. Yeah, this thing of we want to see people become Christians. We want to invite them in. And part of it is reading the Bible with them and opening that up. And so how do you how do you bring up the conversation, like the topic of of reading the Bible with someone? Um, maybe you've been journeying with them a little while and um, you kind of shared your story. You might have shared about Jesus. And then how do you bring up that topic of I'm, I'm going to talk about the Bible or do you want to read the Bible with me or whatever it is? How do you do that? I think um, I it depends really. I, I think at what kind of um, stage that they're, they're at mm -hmm. and really where they're coming from. And um, but but perhaps just start off a conversation by telling them your story or telling them my story and um, and then saying to them, have you ever read the Bible? Um, do you know any stories in the Bible? They might remember some from Sunday school or school or something like that. Um, do you remember any verses in the Bible or even... Have you said the Lord's Prayer? Because that's a, an inroad as well. And, and just ask them the questions. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I, I, I like to, to, to ask God every time I'm, I'm, I'm meeting some friend or friends, I, I pray that, you know, that, that God will be there, will be helping me and guiding me to, to know where exactly to, to speak and to create some 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 moments there really and I, I i think that god is already the first thing is that god is already speaking to 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 these people it's not all on me you know i'm just putting some 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 bricks on on this journey or trying to and i would go and and, and see what exactly is the need of the person you know is the person looking for meaning for truth or is the person with some physical need that will try and pray for, for, for the person? I'm, I'm actually learning to do that more here at King's, <laughs> very boldly, uh, hopefully one day. Uh, is it an emotional need? Uh, you know, that I want to be there and, and help them. Uh, so so the, the Bible says that, right? That there is Jesus going to, to the lame and the blind uh, or to the Samaritan woman with some emotional issues or discussing more theological, philosophical things with Nicodemus, or Philip talking to the Ethiopian eunuch that was quite open and honest about his, his search for for truth, and he, he just came with the answer. You know? So God is already talking to, to to these people, so it really depends on where they are in their journey, as Joy, as Joy said. Mm. Yeah, it's that thing of getting getting to know them and mm. seeing where they're at and, yeah. and also listening to God or what what he's doing in their lives already mm. so that you, we can kind of be at work with him because that's it, we don't want to be doing this on our own. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's no, we have to do it with Jesus, don't we? So. I think it's it's a good point as well that it it doesn't necessarily become our responsibility. Um mm. We can sow the seeds. And uh, it says in the Bible that Paul sowed the seed and Apollos watered. Mm -hmm. And we can sow the seed. That's our responsibility to sow the seed. But um, we might not even see the outcome mm -hmm. if the person moves on or whatever. Um, but we, we've fulfilled our responsibility. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, it's that thing of taking the pressure off. Of. Mm, yes. Like we just we do our part, we sow our seed, whatever that might be. And 
God's in control of the journey, isn't it? Which is so good. And so maybe someone said, um, or it, it expected expressed an interest in the bible and reading the bible are there any passages or parts of the bible where you would instantly think oh i'm going to take i would take someone to that part are there any great passages to start with someone who's exploring the bible yeah again i think i would try and, and answer any 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 kind of need that the person has avoid polemic things but sometimes the person wants to talk about one thing and but actually, she she, I would be more efficient in answering some some more more deeper issues that she she has or questions that she has, or or, or he has. So, and and if the person is positive enough, I I would just give them a a Bible Bible study plan. I would catch up with the person you know during the week and 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 see how things are and and try and arrange some socials with the person to to see what's going on really and, and if she got stuck with something, something that she, she doesn't agree or he, he doesn't agree. Um, and would always do this as, as a family, you know, and because that makes things much easier. Mm-hmm. And as, as a family, me and my wife and my kids and also my, my Christian friends, because mm-hmm. then eventually I, I won't have the same experience that the person has. The person has some some issues with with drugs and never used drugs, but a friend could could tell his story and his testimony uh, on that, and maybe more helpful than than my yeah. uh, vain uh, no comments. <laughs> yeah, I think of doing it in family. Yeah, is so yeah. key. Yeah, yeah. Good. I I agree with with Victor, and I also think as well that if somebody is exploring faith. Um, I think I would take them to the story of the prodigal son where there is um, love and restoration and uh, where the father just welcomes you back when you've gone astray. And uh, because I would say basically that was my story and uh, that it could be their story Mm. as well. Yeah, there's so much. Mm. Yeah, that's such a... Such an encouraging story mm, about some parable. Yeah, that's really good. Um, Victor, you talked about walking alongside and seeing if people had questions about maybe the Bible plan that they're reading. How how people we all have questions about the Bible, but how do we deal with um, when people have questions or if they have arguments or doubts? Um, do you have any experiences um, of doing that, or how how would you t- tackle those things? I think I would be very honest with them and and say I don't, I haven't got all the answers. Um, but um, yeah, I think I think I would just ask them their viewpoint as well because I think that can lead in to to other questions and other answers. Well, what do you think about that? What what's your opinion on that? Yeah. Uh, and get a conversation going. Yeah, and that's what Jesus did, isn't yes. he? Like, yeah. someone would ask him a question, and he'd just flip it back with yeah. another question, question. and yes. you suddenly open up a conversation instead of it just being like, "Oh, I'm just going to teach you these things." Yeah, it brings it back yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And uh, something that's come through out through all of the blessed conversations is how important it is to love the person that's in front of you to to really care about them, to listen to them and not just be kind of this, oh, I just need to do this because my church have told me to do this, but actually care about them. And in making disciples and reaching out to our friends and um, walking alongside them in in their exploration of faith of Jesus, there's, it is a, it is a journey and there's a cost and a sacrifice to that. How do we, how do you go about that? How have you gone about that? Um, and also what are the good sides of going um, and making disciples and walking alongside people in that journey? Well, I, I think that sacrifice is something very subjective. Mm. I like to, 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 to ask this question. What is 1,000 pounds a lot of money? You cannot say the answer. 
and as you know what what you're trying to to buy with one one thousand pounds so so one thousand pounds for a house is nothing right but one thousand pounds for a pair of shoes is the the worst thing you can do with your money right so sometimes we we are we are avoiding buying the house because we are spending our our one thousand pounds with shoes right so once we 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 know we have our spiritual view very very you know open we we can judge and 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 nothing will be will be expensive if you see in terms of efforts you know what what is a barbecue about you know, <laughs> what is a chat or an extra hour that you're you're talking to a friend in 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 a sports club that you extended a bit out of your schedule, you know, that's really nothing. There's no sacrificing there, really, because compared to, to, to what, what is at stake. Yeah. I think for me, this, this subject doesn't come very easily to me, um, unlike Victor, who, who is a natural. Um, I have to work at this, and uh, it involves a lot of, sweat and a lot of um, prayer on my behalf to be able to open my mouth sometimes. Um, but as you say, the rewards are great. And um, but what I do love is coming alongside somebody and spending time with them and being on that journey with them is just so fulfilling um answering questions and 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 going home and and praying for them and and perhaps if i'm very brave saying i'll pray for you now um but um yeah it it is so fulfilling in the end and when you think of it in the terms of eternity it's it's amazing yeah definitely it's so worth the sacrifice, isn't it? Mm. That thing of, and there's so much joy in walking alongside someone, and when they grasp that, or when you, you just see that seed, kind of whatever that seed is, but that shoot come through, and you think, oh, there's something there, and it's it's seeing the, the value of the sacrifice, as you said, and yeah, and it isn't. It doesn't all come naturally. It definitely doesn't come naturally to me, but there is that urgency and that yeah. It's so good. So yeah, good. and imagine if if old small groups had had people non Christians visiting them. Mm. You know how, how how more joyful that would be, how more meaningful that would be. So, if if you think very selfishly, you know that there's your life at stake. You know your your your, your meaningless life that can turn into something very meaningful and very adventurous and and close to to much closer to Jesus, you know. Mm, yeah, definitely. And that's the thing, like, you both started out by sharing about small groups and, and doing these things in small groups. And there's that thing of we get to do this in community, we get to do this in the family of God, and we can do that in our small groups. A lot of people might be the only Christian in their neighbourhood or their workplaces or their schools or wherever it is, but they're not alone as Christians and it's inviting kind of and yeah thinking about how we do small groups like who we invite into our small groups where are the opportunities for that is so good so just to fin finish um in making disciples reading the bible with others if someone is maybe at the beginning of that journey what would you say to them to encourage them or kind of be your top tip to that person I didn't prime you for this question, so I'm being mean right now. <laughs> well, I think if you've journeyed with the person, um, that that helps as well because you, you get to know them and you've invested time in them and you've probably got a closer relationship with them. And, um, and I think you, that is very important. Mm. Yeah, with that journey and with them. Mm -hmm. That's so good. What about you, Victor? Well, follow the bless. 
<laughs> oh, nice sequence, nice. really. <laughs> That's, That's a good, good ending, isn't it? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it is, yeah. Follow, follow the bus. Yeah. And think about next steps as well. Uh, after you, you shared your story, if you had a positive or negative response, you know, keep praying for the person. And uh, as, as, as we, we said, you know, try and, and, and get more people involved so it's not uh, as, as tiring, you know, just this one-to-one -one approach. Sometimes it's, it's a bit lonely and, and, and less engaging than, than if you have all the people involved. So you work as a team. It's two or three against one, not one-on-one, -on -one, you know. That's great. Thank you so much, Joy and Victor. I have loved this conversation and it's been so encouraging just to hear your experiences and your hearts in this. And Church, I hope this has been really encouraging for you and let's go out and love the people that are in front of us and let's remember that we're not alone, that we're, let's be listening to God, but also bringing them into community. Maybe it's thinking actually you can think of someone who might come along to a small group social or even come along into a Bible study or it's just offering a scripture or or part of the bible or looking at things with them so let's be let's be encouraged that we are on the victoria side that we have great news for these people and that's the end of the series thank you so much for watching these videos i think hope you you found them as encouraging as i have i know i've definitely been encouraged and i'm excited to see what god does in those the lives of those who don't know jesus around me and so let's go out let's go make disciples and be jesus to those who don't know him Thank you.